Hello and welcome back to another session. In today's session, we are going to host a PHP MySQL web application in AWS EC2 instance. We are going to automate the whole process by using Terraform and Ansible. So this is a two-step process. First, we are going to provision the infrastructure using Terraform, which will create a VPC and a public subnet within it. Then an EC2 instance with an elastic IP attached to it is provisioned within the public subnet that is placed within a security group. There is also an internet gateway attached to the VPC to enable accessing internet from the EC2 instance. Once we have this infrastructure in place, the next step is to use Ansible to install Nginx, PHP, and MariaDB in the EC2 instance and then finally place the web application within the EC2 instance. So let's get started. Okay, so we have two folders in our project in Ansible and infrastructure. And first begin with readme file. You can find this whole repository in GitHub. I'll leave a link for that in the description. You have a couple of prerequisites and a few installation steps. You have to install Terraform and Ansible. You can find how to install in the links given. And there is a three part process to set up the infrastructure, then the application itself. And finally, we will tear down the application that we just created. First, let's start with setting up the infrastructure. We'll start with the input file. The, there are a few inputs for the Terraform here. Access key, secret key, the region where we are going to provision our EC2 instance, the AMI, as well as the public key for accessing the instance. Then there's going to be only one single output, which is the public IP of the VM, which we will later use in the Ansible script. And finally, the resources. We're going to provision a VPC with a public subnet and this is going to be within a single availability zone and I'm using the out of the box VPC module. Then we are going to create a SSH key pair, which we'll be using later, later on to log in and look at the logs. And then we have the instance itself. I'm using a T2 micro here in order to stay within free tier limits. We will also attach a public IP to the VM in order to access it. And finally, there is a security group which allows port 22 only from our local IP and port 80 from the world and port 443 from the world as well. So this is the whole infrastructure. Now let's head to the terminal and run a few Terraform commands to provision all the infrastructure needed. So we need to cd into infrastructure folder and run terraform init command first, which will initialize your uh, terraform files, the modules and the plugins. And once that is done, the next step is to run terraform plan, which will create a plan for the resources that is going to be created. Here you will be asked for a few inputs like the access key, secret key, and the uh, SSH key. So let's head to the AWS console and create an IAM user. So I have already have a IAM user. So I'm just creating an access key out of it. And then I have pasted the uh, SSH key as well as the secret key. So once that is done, you will get to see the list of resources that is supposed to be created. In here, we have 11 resources that are to be added, zero to uh, delete and zero to update as well. As this is the first time we are running the Terraform, once you confirm that the plan looks good, then you can go ahead and run the apply command. Here again, you will need to specify the input values. and confirm that you are good to run the Terraform apply. So now Terraform is creating all the resources. This will take a couple of minutes.
once that is done uh, you can see the public IP of the VM so grab that public IP because we set this as the output of the Terraform so our first step is done that is setting up the infrastructure now moving on to the second part uh, where we are going to install the application so for that we are going to use Ansible so let's get into the Ansible folder you will find an inventory file so inventory file is a place where we use to specify all the host uh, against which our Ansible scripts has to run so here replace that oro ro, ro, ro with the public IP which you just copied from the Terraform output and then replace the path to the private key to the path to the private key in your local machine so in my case I have the private key stored under secrets folder so I have mentioned secrets and ssh.private in your case wherever is it, it is in your local machine you can uh, specify that path so once that is done this is the main um, Ansible playbook file where uh, we are specifying a whole lot of tasks to install uh, Nginx, PHP and then set up the configurations for both Nginx, PHP as well as uh, our application itself and once the configuration files are updated you have to set the right permissions for all the files and the directories so we are creating a specific directory war www.php where we are going to place our application so we are creating a zip file out of our application files and copying it over to the EC2 instance then unzipping it inside the instance and placing it under the war file and we should also ensure that the directories have write permissions and finally we are starting the nginx so that was the first part and the second part of ansible script is to set up the mariadb we are installing mariadb and creating a database inside that we are going to call the database as user inventory and we are also creating a user to access the database from our PHP application and finally a table called as users within the user database the users table is going to have six fields where we are going to store our user information so this is the entire application you can find the PHP files under the PHP folder you can take a look at them and if you had any questions leave them in the comments so this is the entire Ansible setup now let's go to terminal and run the Ansible execute the Ansible playbook for that you can find the command in the readme file copy the Ansible playbook command and head over to the terminal and this time we are going to run this command from the Ansible folder so let's cd into that folder and the command goes like this ansible playbook i and then you have to specify the inventory file where you have all your host uh, listed and then the uh, playbook where you have all your tasks listed so once this command uh, uh, once you run this command ansible will go ahead and ssh into your instance with the private key which is given and run all the tasks so this will take five to ten minutes so I have paused the video and I uh, have come back and it has totally executed 23 tasks as you can see here and all these tasks are the tasks which are listed in the uh, application.yaml uh, playbook so all these tasks are run against the EC2 instance which we provisioned using the Terraform, um, Terraform file so this is an easiest way to run your uh, to set up an infra set up your application so you can see all the tasks being listed here and if something fails then it will show it as failed so that you can go back and correct it and run it again you can use the same script in 
multiple other VMs as well by specifying all the VMs in the host file. So this is done. Hopefully we should have our application up and running. Let's grab the IP and head to the browser. There you go. So we have our PHP application up and running in EC2 instance. So we just have two options for now, uh, add user and search user. You can go ahead and play around it and add things like update user and delete user. Let's see how it works. First, let's try creating a user. So I'm going to give some random values for first name, last name, email, city and country and create a user. So this entry gets created in your MariaDB which runs within your EC2 instance. So you can even have two different EC2 instances and use one as your uh, web application and uh, for running your PHP application and another for your uh, database. It's, it's totally up to you. Only thing is you have to set up connectivity between the two instances. So I've added a couple of users now. Let's try searching them. So the search works based on the city. So if you enter a city and search for the user, it will bring back the data from the MariaDB, which runs within the EC2 instance. So this is how you set up a PHP application within uh, EC2 instance. As I said earlier, there are endless possibilities. Even you can use RDS as a database in the backend. So now that we saw our application working end to end, let's see how to uh, look at the logs if in case something goes wrong when you're trying this out or if you're modifying the application and if something doesn't work quite right, then you can log into the, uh, sorry, you can SSH into the VM by using the private key. This is the SSH command, uh, SSH, and then you have to specify the private key, then the username of the VM at the IP. So once you SSH, I'm becoming a root user and you have to cd into var log. That is where all your logs file exist. So under this, you can find two separate folders, one for Nginx and another one for MariaDB. First, let's get into Nginx and see what's in there. So this is where all your application related logs are uh, added, mainly your UI related logs. So there are two different logs here. One is app access and the one is app error. So app access maintains a log of all the um, timestamps of when your application is accessed and where from where it's being accessed and error stores your application related errors. Then the, Mar the logs under MariaDB uh, folder will have the logs which are specific to the SQL queries which are being executed. So both these will have useful information which can be uh, used while debugging or if you're changing something in the application itself. And also you can execute the SQL queries directly from the instance by using MySQL in order to check if your databases are provisioned correctly and if your uh, entries are being created properly. That is it. At the end, we are going to wrap up the session by destroying the instances which we just created. So just run Terraform destroy and give the input values again. You can get rid of specifying the input values each and every time by giving them in the uh, environment variables. That should also work. So yes, that's our destroy. That is, that, is, that is it for today, guys. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.